There was a paper that showed that dogs could be trained to detect ovarian cancer in blood from patients who had it, which immediately told me that there was a, a unique code of profile there. So if dogs could be trained to it, we can do this with instrumentation. When it came as an option to look at ovarian cancer, which is devastating and there is no early detection system, it was just natural that we could take this multidisciplinary approach. So our team is built on four different areas. We have the detection dogs at the Penn Vet Working Dog Center, which are really the gold standard of chemical detection and vapor detection. We combine that with my colleague George Preddy at the Manel Chemical Census Center, who is analyzing the vapors from these blood samples using the techniques of chemistry. And then in my lab, we're trying to create a device that actually could be built at low cost and could be used for analysis of clinical samples. All under the collaboration with the medical school to bring us the patients and the samples. And it's kind of a unique approach because we've been able to kind of tie it all together. These dogs can save lives. And what do you expect from man's best friend? I mean, this is just what they should be doing, working together with us to make life better. But we are not having dogs smell people. What we use for our dogs is blood plasma. So that's the clear part of the blood and it's 50 microliters, which is like a drop. And so when it's time to do the testing, well, according to our randomization scheme, we'll pull out our cancer sample and our benign sample and our normal sample, and we'll put them in this scent wheel. And then the dogs go in independently we're watching it all on video. They go around, they search, and they tell us. So it's just like, whoa, right there. So their nose has these little flaps on the sides. And so what it does is it doesn't disturb the airflow coming in. And then when it comes out on the sides, it actually creates this little vortex that can bring up more odors. Then as that air goes to the olfactory recess in the dog, that is like this big honeycomb area. So there's all this space for odors to interact and give a signal. Dog says yes, dog says no, done. The dogs can differentiate a blood sample from somebody with ovarian cancer versus somebody with benign ovarian disease or normals. But what we're looking at is how early can they pick up cancer? We've had some samples from patients with stage one or stage two, and that's what we really want. And the dogs have been able to detect that. The other really exciting thing that we're doing is with Dr. Preddy because he's separating these odors so that we can pinpoint what the actual chemical makeup is. Is there a certain part, if we collect it and bring it to the dogs, will that represent cancer to them or do you need the whole thing to say cancer? Brewing coffee or cooking food, what you are smelling is a mixture of volatile chemical compounds. And that's what we look for, and that is identifying what the volatile compounds are emanating from the blood with the onset of ovarian cancer. So the samples are collected prior to surgery, they're spun down, uh, the plasma is taken off, put into glass vials and frozen. Each sample is analyzed using gas chromatography mass spectrometry, which helps tell us how much of each chemical is present in the unique odor. When you see the, uh, the array of compounds, but it is quite complex, but there is no new unique compounds produced by the cancer, but there is a change in the pattern of volatile compounds. We've narrowed it down to a group of between 25 and 30, and I think the more compounds we encompass, the closer we'll get to what maybe what the dogs are smelling. We like to think that we can uh, build a smarter, more sensitive and specific sensor if we know exactly what volatiles better represent the cancer signal. So if we could come up with an instrument, an electrical device, if you will, that was as good as a dog, I think in the long run that would be a better solution. The system behind me is what we would call a nanosensor, uh, an electronic nose system, an actual device that could detect the odor signature of ovarian cancer in uh, blood samples. So the vials with the human samples are heated and we stir them a little bit to help release the volatile compounds that are in them. The vapors come into the box and then the molecules in that vapor interact with the carbon nanotube devices. Because every atom on a nanotube is exposed to the environment, 
The electrical properties of the nanotube are very sensitive, so we're using a molecular layer of DNA to control the way the nanotube interacts with the environment. The DNA would interact with the vapors, and the carbon nanotubes, their electrical properties would change, and that pattern of changes that we record seems to be characteristic of the mixture of compounds that are in the vapor. If you look at all our data set together, you could make a very good argument that we have a system that can detect uh, correctly somewhere between 90 and 95 percent of the time. Now, we're past that stage. We have a signal. We know we're seeing something. The animals know they're seeing something. Our colleague, George Preddy, he's seeing something. Now we, we have ideas about how we could work together to improve the nano-sensing apparatus that we're building. But we need also to convert this system into a more professionally designed instrument that actually could find its way into clinical use. And I think that uh, over time, I think we're gonna get there.